When the UK government publicly attached the nightfall program to Ukraine's needs, it sounded like a simple message. Britain is building a brand new ballistic missile and Ukraine will be the main beneficiary. But behind that headline sits a more complicated reality, because Nightfall is now showing the classic signs of a defense project colliding with physics, industrial capacity, and the brutal arithmetic of time. Nightfall was initiated in August 2025, and the original ambition was frankly extreme. London wanted at least five finished missile samples within 9 to 12 months of signing a development contract, and the missile was expected to fly beyond 600 kilometers, carry a warhead around 300 kilograms, land within roughly 5 meters even under heavy electronic warfare, and do it all for a unit cost capped around half a million pounds. That is the sort of requirement sheet that reads well in a briefing and then starts to unravel the moment engineers ask the most basic question, which constraint would you like to relax first? Because a long-range ballistic missile is not a single thing. It is a propulsion problem, a materials problem, a guidance problem, a warhead integration problem, a manufacturing problem, and a testing problem, each with its own timelines. And the key word here is testing. You can iterate software quickly. You cannot iterate flight tests quickly, especially when you are dealing with a high energy system, a large warhead, and a requirement to remain accurate in a contested electromagnetic environment. Every test flight is a campaign. Every campaign reveals something new, and every something new either becomes a fix or a delay, usually both. So what happened? The most telling signal is that the requirements have already been softened. The updated expectations now point to range above 500 kilometers rather than 600 plus, a warhead around 200 kilograms rather than 300, and accuracy under electronic warfare around 10 meters rather than 5. Yet the cost ceiling rises to about 800,000 pounds per missile, more than a 1.5 times increase from the earlier figure. If you ever want a quick way to measure how hard a program is turning out to be, watch what happens when performance goes down but price goes up. That combination rarely appears unless the early plan collided with reality, and there is another detail that should make you pause. The production tempo is still expected to be 10 missiles per month. That is not a casual number. 10 per month is an industrial commitment. It implies stable supply of rocket motors, guidance components, airframe sections, safe storage, quality control, and a workforce that can maintain throughput without sacrificing reliability. It also implies that this is not meant to be a boutique capability for a handful of symbolic strikes. This is meant to be a sustained deep strike inventory, something that can shape operational planning, not merely decorate it. Now consider the calendar. The updated requirements were issued to industry on the 19th of December 2025, with submissions expected by the 9th of February 2026. Candidate selection and contract signing are expected around March 2026. If the timelines are still being treated as fast, the first missiles would be heading into testing at the end of 2026 or the start of 2027, and that is only testing. Serial production is a separate milestone, and it rarely arrives immediately after first test articles. A country can build a prototype. Scaling a prototype into steady production is where programs often lose their promised speed. This is where the comparison to another British effort becomes useful. The UK's parallel project Breakstop, aimed at a long-range cruise missile for Ukraine, was announced in September 2024. In concept, it was simpler than a ballistic missile, a cheaper mass-produced cruise missile with around 600 kilometers of range, a 200-300 kilogram warhead, a target unit cost of roughly 400,000 pounds, and production of about 240 per year. The initial plan expected prototypes flying in the second quarter of 2025 and serial production beginning in September 2025. In reality, the first prototypes flew only in December 2025, and serial production slipped into 2026 with no firm month attached. That is not a scandal. It is what rapid defense development often looks like once it meets real-world constraints. So ask yourself, if a cruise missile program with an apparently straightforward cheap and mass philosophy slid by months on its early milestones, what does that imply for a ballistic missile with demanding accuracy under electronic warfare and a very aggressive production tempo? Nightfall is starting later, aiming higher in complexity and still expected to move fast. That is a recipe for schedule pressure, and schedule pressure is exactly how costs rise and requirements get adjusted. The accuracy requirement is especially revealing. Hitting within 10 meters in conditions of electronic warfare is not just about a better GPS receiver. It implies robust navigation through jamming and spoofing, resilient inertial systems, careful error modeling, and often some kind of terminal correction or strong mid-course update logic, capabilities that quickly become expensive. Modern battlefields punish anything that depends on a single signal. Ukraine's experience has demonstrated how rapidly the electronic environment changes, how quickly countermeasures appear, 
and how vital it is for strike systems to remain credible when satellites are degraded and comms are contested. That is why accuracy under EW is not a luxury requirement. It is the difference between a strategic tool and an expensive firework. Range and warhead mass form another trade-off triangle with cost. Cutting the warhead from 300 kilograms to 200 kilograms can buy range, or it can buy margin in the airframe and propulsion design, or it can reduce stress on guidance and control. But if cost still rises, it suggests that the expensive parts are not the warhead casing. They are the high-performance subsystems and the industrial setup required to make the missiles at scale. And 10 per month at a price cap under a million pounds each is still a difficult target. Even if the unit cost is controlled, the non-recurring costs, development, infrastructure, certification, testing do not disappear. They are simply paid up front. There is also a strategic layer to this because Nightfall is not just a missile. It is a political decision to move deeper into long-range strike support in a way that can be sustained and potentially expanded. For Ukraine, a domestically produced or reliably supplied deep strike capability is not only about hitting targets at distance, it is about deterrence, about forcing Russia to distribute air defenses and logistics, about raising the cost of operational planning. But credibility matters. A missile that arrives in small numbers, late and with uncertain throughput, does not reshape the strategic picture as much as a missile that arrives with predictable supply and repeatable effects. That is why the most important question is not, what is the maximum range? The key question is, what is the timeline to a steady flow? If Nightfall reaches testing in late 2026 or early 2027, then the decisive phase becomes 2027, proving reliability, building confidence, and turning prototypes into production articles without losing the cost ceiling. And if Breakstop is any guide, early flight success does not automatically translate into immediate mass output. So when people ask, when will Nightfall be ready? The responsible answer is the current indicators point to first test articles at the end of 2026 or the start of 2027, with serial production likely further out, because the program has already had to renegotiate its own ambitions. That does not mean Nightfall is failing, it means Nightfall is behaving like a real weapons program. The more interesting question is what London prioritizes from here, absolute performance, tight cost control or speed to fielding, because it is very hard to maximize all three at once. And that brings us to the final uncomfortable thought. If the UK is willing to accept reduced range, a lighter warhead, and looser accuracy while spending more per missile, then Nightfall's challenge is not a lack of will. It is the friction of building a sophisticated deep strike system quickly at scale in a contested technological era. The battlefield is moving fast. Can procurement move fast enough to meet it, or will Nightfall become another case study in how even urgent programs discover that urgency is not an industrial capability unless you invest in it long before the crisis arrives?